or as giving. You are bringing back what is dead to life. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. The titan law is dead. The Bible says the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire. He killed Malachi 3 that he may establish the second. So if they take you to Malachi 3, take them to Revelation 22 that the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire. So the titan law has been killed. It must not exist side by side. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me what? Free from the law of sin and death. Join Dr. Abel Damino, the senior pastor of Power City International, as he explores exegetically Bible doctrine on tithe and tithing. Date from Sunday 14th of March to Sunday 21st of March 2021. Time. Monday 15th to Saturday 20th, 6 p.m. daily. Sundays 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Join the broadcast on Radio Aquibum 90.5 FM Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily. Unuyo FM 100.7 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. And Heritage Radio 104.9 10 p.m. till midnight. And also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino, and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Host, Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. Don't miss out. Come on, one more time. Give the Lord a shout of praise. If you know that you're not going to remain the same again, jump up on your feet and give the Lord a shout. Woo! I don't know about you, but I believe the word of God. Hey, hallelujah. One more time.
Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Your word is nourishing us. Your word is feeding us. And your word is growing us up. And we rejoice that by the end of this service, Jesus will be glorified and the body of Christ edified. Thank you for the blessing upon this fellowship. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. We're so glad to welcome all of you family, friends, and brothers on social media. 
We want to also welcome the entire Kwai Bomb State community connected to the service right now by Comfort FM, XL FM Radio, Kwai Bomb, you know your FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you, whatever platform you're using to connect to the service. We want you to know we love you. We're glad you're here. And those of you on radio, help me call a friend, a family member, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community, like we've always done, let's get these truths to the end of the world. Help me share the video, tag some people, drop them on all the groups on your page. And of course, make sure you put them on monogram, telegram, WhatsApp groups. Let's get the gospel truth to the ends of the earth. But it's an honor and a pleasure to have all of you connected to the service. Are you excited to be in the house this morning? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout this morning? Glory! Amen! And all our campus is what a joy to have all of you this morning. We're really delighted to have everybody. And uh, I'm just being informed that our, our church in Oron is launching officially. And um, yes, and uh, they, they launched this morning. And their venue for Oron Church is Villa de Mia Hotel, number one Imono Lane, off Ayo Tongue Road in Oron. That's where our campus in Oron begins to fellowship from today. So what a joy to rejoice with the brethren in Oron. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of God this morning. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 3, we are still examining the believer and the tight today. Under the series, tight and tighten, you know, understanding tithe and tithing, all right? So we're looking at the believer and tithe today. Second Timothy chapter 3, and we're looking at a holistic, you know, approach to this subject. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. Second Timothy 3.15, Brother Paul says to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures talks about salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 16 and 17 of the same chapter. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The word ophilimos, advantageous or useful for doctrine. The word didascalia or didascalos, doctrine which is teaching or explanation and in teaching and explanation, you will have reproof or evidence, evidence, and out of ed- evidence, you will have correction, correction, a resetting of the mind. All right? And when correction comes, you unlearn so you can relearn. And all of that comes from teaching. The teaching of God's word will give you a reason to unlearn so you can relearn. And it's very important, especially for those of us that have been taught a lot of things that are not doctrinally right. We've got to be ready to humbly adjust and allow the scriptures correct us in the light of Christ. And when correction takes place, the next thing will be instruction in righteousness, which is spiritual growth. Instruction in righteousness. And we established this morning that the first thing to understand is that the scriptures are inspired of God. Inspired. That is, the word inspired means it was given by God's inspiration. And we established this morning that God inspired the types and the shadows of the Old Testament. God inspired the types and the shadows. For example, the giving of offerings by Abel was inspired of God. The, the, the ark of Noah used as a type and shadow to teach about Christ was inspired of God. So in the inspiration of God, we see types and shadows. In the inspiration of God, we see prophecies of the prophets. Luke chapter 24 verse 25, Jesus speaking concerning, you know, to those guys that were discussing the events of the past three days. He called them fools, slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. The prophets, the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses, the law, 
and all the prophets. So the law communicates in types and shadows. The prophets communicate in prophecies. The types and shadows are according to the pattern that was shown to Moses on the mount. So they are different. The law is different from the prophecies of the prophets. That's very important. Look at Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private origin, private source. No prophecy of the scripture stands on its own. They are all together. The prophecies of scripture are all together. When you see the law, it refers to types and shadows period. Then you talk about the prophecies which is contained in the book of the prophets. They were all inspired to speak concerning the Christ. And in the first service we laid quite some foundation. I will advise those of you that were not in the first service to get the materials of the first service. We also said that the spirit of Christ is the inspiration of the scriptures. The spirit of Christ. That is the inspiration of the scriptures. That is the spirit that points to Christ. The spirit that talks about Christ. The spirit that speaks concerning the advent of Christ. That is the inspiration behind the Bible. So that inspiration therefore lets us know that it is one message, one content, Christ, one context, Christ. One message, Christ, one content, Christ, one context, Christ. The Bible is towards one people, and that is us. One people, which is us. <clears throat> now observe. It says that the scriptures are given by inspiration and they are profitable for doctrine, for teaching. They are profitable for teaching. Which now shows that the scriptures are saying the same thing, one prophetically and one fulfillment. So the New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. It's one testament. One a promise, one the promise fulfilled. The Old Testament promise, the New Testament promise fulfilled. Which means there's a similar chord that runs from Genesis to Revelation. One message, one character, one singular revelation. We don't have two testaments, we have one testament the other one testament is the prophecy or the promise. And the other testament is the fulfillment of the same prophecy and the same promise. So it's one covenant, one testament fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So it shows that there's a train of thoughts that flows. A train of thoughts. So it says to teach. Which means I have Genesis to Malachi to teach. Remember, when the scriptures were communicated to the early church, they didn't have Genesis, they didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They didn't have Romans to Revelation. So everything that was taught to the believers in the early church was from Genesis to Malachi. Because Genesis to Malachi is profitable for teaching and explanation of Christian living. So what we have today as the New Testament is actually the messages that were taught to the early church from Genesis to Malachi. That's what we now have as the epistles. Which means the epistles were drawn out of Genesis to Malachi. So the scriptures therefore are profitable for teaching. Which will bring about evidence. Which will bring about correction or adjusting of the mind. Which will result in spiritual growth, spiritual growth, instruction in righteousness. Are you still in the building? Now, please pay attention because I'm going somewhere. We've been talking about the tithe and the tithing. And the, like I said, we laid some foundation in the first service. And the, the key point that we arrived at at the end of the first service was, Why did God ask them to pay the tithe? Why? 
We looked at the what was the tithe for. We looked, I mean, what was the tithe? We looked at where was it to be given. And we looked at at what time should it be given. And we said the tithe was to be given in the temple. That cannot be sustained because there are no more temples. We also said the tithe was to be given yearly at the time of harvest. That is no more sustained. Okay? We also established, therefore, that the tithe was supposed to be food products and herbs. That is no more sustained. But what is sustainable till today in the New Testament is why the tithe. Why the tithe? And we saw that the reason for the tithe was honor. To honor God. They gave the tithe or paid the tithe to honor God. We saw that nobody demanded it from Abraham. Abraham gave it after Melchizedek pronounced him blessed. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heaven and the earth. And Melchizedek was given the 10%. So Abraham did not give to Melchizedek to be blessed. He was blessed. That's why he gave. Jacob said to God, if you bless me and take me and bring me back, I will give you a tenth. So Jacob didn't give to be blessed. He was blessed. I mean, he told God, if you bless me, I will give you a tenth. So contrary to what has been taught that you give to be blessed, there's no such scripture for that. You give because you are blessed. So when you give, you do not give expecting something. You give to meet a need. You give to honor God. Period. We are not in a transaction with God. We are in a relationship with God. I am not mobilizing God to do something for me. He has done everything that he needs to do for me. And in honor of what he has done, I give in honor. So, we said that is sustained, the purpose for the tithe. Let me read it again. Deuteronomy 14, 22. And I take off from there. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. 23, now observe. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he had chosen to put his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks. Why? That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. So the reason for the tithe was that you may learn to fear the word reverence or the word honor God. The reason for the tithe was worship. The reason for the tithe was reverence. Now, look at Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Let's see what brother Paul says about the Old Testament. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning. So there is something to learn from the tithe. I call it lessons from the tithe. For our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All right. So the Old Testament was written for our learning. There are things to learn. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Now, all these things happen unto them symbolically. Because the original doesn't have for examples. The original has symbolically. They are not our examples. It happened to them symbolically and they are written for our teaching. For our instruction, the word admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So, there are things we learn from the tithe. Remember, I said that the cardinal fact of the tithe is that God asked it so that they will fear him. And we establish in the first service that that can be sustained in the new covenant. Alright, let me move now. So why do I honor God? I honor God because everything I have came from Him. My life, my strength, 
even the environment to do business. Whatever kind of business I'm doing is because God created them. Whether I'm a carpenter, God created the wood and gave me the knowledge to do the carpentry work. Whether I'm a lawyer, God gave me the knowledge, gave me the brain. Okay? Whatever you do. Honoring God is coming back to God in acknowledgement with a portion of your increase to say, I acknowledge you in honor that you are the reason behind my increase. That's the reason why God gave them the tithe. Now, please remember, we said that we cannot sustain the Levites. Okay, we can't sustain that. Because First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says that we are priests and kings. Put it for me. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So all of us are kings and priests. Look at Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. Revelation chapter 5 verse number 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast slain, or thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Alright? Look at the next verse. 10. And has made us unto our God. Kings and priests. All of us are priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Revelation chapter 1 verse number 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and, to, and his father. To whom be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now so all of us are kings and priests. So we can't sustain the Levites. When you hear forever, it shows you it is God that is doing it. Now, look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Next verse to 13. The, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because you will keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repay them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I commanded this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant, and the mercy which he has sworn unto thy fathers. Now observe verse 13. And he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, the corn, the wine, the oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep in the land. In the land. All of this is for Canaan. In the land which shall promise or sworn unto thy fathers to give thee. Alright? So the Old Testament had a reward to the tithe because of the hardness of their hearts. Abraham and Isaac who started tithing and Jacob who started tithing, there was no reward attached. They just gave in honor. But under the law of Moses, the people's hearts were hardened. So Moses attached a blessing to their giving to be able to cajole them to give because of the state of their heart. Okay? But remember, the reason for the tithe was on. It's so easy to read Malachi and talk about, you know, all of those Malachi things, you know. And uh, remember, the devourer is not the reason why you, pay, you give your tithe or people pay tithe. The reason why God said is so that they will honor me, they will worship me, and they will reverence me. That's why they give in honor. Is it clear? All right, now. So we know the what of the tithe. 
animals and herbs. We've established that the tithe is not money. It's animals and herbs. Then what is the why? To honor God, to reverence God, in other words, to worship God. Are we in the building? So we're clear on that. Let me go to the first school of thought. Remember, in the first service, I talked about two schools of thought. The first school of thought say, tithe is Old Testament abolished. The second school of thought say, tithe was paid before Old Testament in Genesis. Therefore, they give you Genesis 14, Hebrews 7, and Matthew 23 to back it up. Okay, to back it up. All right, now, so let me quickly visit the first school of thought. The first school of thought says, well, the tithe is a New Testament principle because it did not start with the Old Testament. That looks a little bit shallow in thinking because what we read in Genesis 14 was not required by anybody. Nobody asked for it. Abraham just came from the, the, the war, recovered Lot, and from the spoil of war, honored God by giving to Melchizedek. Nobody asked of it. It was an act of worship from Abraham. When Melchizedek said, blessed be Abraham, the possessor of heaven and earth, God has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abraham gave him tithes of all. So Abraham honored God. I've also heard people say, Abraham paid the tithe by faith. No, don't be adding things. Where did you see faith in that whole story? <laughs> don't, be, don't be reading your thoughts into scripture. Let the scriptures speak for themselves. Because there's no mention of tithe anywhere, whether in Genesis 14 or even in Hebrews chapter 7. No mention of faith connected to tithe there. He wasn't doing it to expect anything. He did it simply because he had received from God to honor God. And Jacob clears it for us. He says, when I go and you bring me back and you bless me, then I will give you the tithe. It's very clear. Now, to just tell you this is, you know, from you in honor. Just that. So you can see that the reason in Genesis 14 and 28 was sustained in the law. The reason was sustained in the law. Some people also talk about Hebrews 7. Okay. Um, and it's awful for anybody to, to, to call Hebrews 7 New Testament titan. Somebody wrote a book on tight New Testament titan. I couldn't stop laughing. Because I know he's going to twist scriptures, four scriptures out of context, form contexts that don't exist to be able to establish New Testament titan. There's no such thing as New Testament titan. It does not exist anywhere in the Bible. Okay? So that's, that's ridiculous to say that. Hebrews chapter 7, 7 verse 1 to 17 was about Abraham and Melchizedek in relationship, you know, to Aaron. Trying to establish the superiority of the priesthood of Christ over the priesthood of Aaron. In fact, Hebrews 7 lets us see clearly that the fact Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek and Aaron received tithe while in the loins of Abraham. It shows you the superiority of Melchizedek over Aaron and Levi. That's the point that Hebrews 7 was establishing. So in that context, superiority has to do with authority. That means that tithe mentioned in Hebrews chapter 7 was to show honor and worship and respect. It wasn't a teaching come and give tithe because Abraham did it. Now that's not what he was talking about. Rather, it was to show us the superiority of the priesthood of Melchizedek over the Levitical priesthood. All right? Now, Jesus mentioned tithe in Matthew 23, 23. And if you observe, none of it was money. He said the, the, the cumin, the anise, and the curry, all of them were herbs, spices. Okay? When Jesus was talking about the tithe in Matthew 23, 23. So Jesus mentioned tithe as a matter of the law. Why did he say that? Because he was talking to scribes and Pharisees who were giving tithe under the law. So the audience dictated why Jesus made the statement that he made. Now in Luke chapter 11 verse 42. The tithe is mentioned there again. 
Luke 11 42. And of course, but woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and true and rue and all manner of herbs and pass judgment over and the love of God. This ought you to have done and not to leave the order undone. Still the same context. All right. Then Luke chapter 18, verse 11. Luke chapter 18, verse 11 to 14. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, exhaustioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Twelve. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Thirteen. And the publican standing afar off will not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, he last must. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. So the other man, even with all his diet and fasting, did not get acceptance before God. But this man who came humbly on the basis of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ was accepted. All right? Now, so Jesus, whenever he talked about diet, mentioned it like, you know, like uh, an indictment. Like a rebuke on the people because they were relying on their tithe as if their tithe had the audacity to get God's attention for them. Which is what the legalists do actually. The legalists are dependent on their works. I, I fast, I pray, I give. There's no way God will not bless me. You are a, pub, you are, you are a Pharisee. That's not the reason why God blesses you. What about unbelievers who don't fast and they don't pray and they have children and they have money and they have wives. Not even wife, wives, wives. And they have houses, and they have cars, and they don't tight, they don't pray, yet they have all the things that you call blessing. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? Two, two people, an unbeliever and a believer who pays tight and fast and pray, applies for a job, and the job is given to the unbeliever who did not pray. How do you explain that? If it was on the basis of your tithing and all of that, that God blesses you, uh, that theology is square. It has no stand. Is lopsided and it does not pass the test of sound doctrine. So God doesn't bless you because you did something. He blessed you in Christ before you knew what to do. So whatever you do now is in response to what God has done. You are not doing it to get. You are just doing it in honor of what he has done. If it's clear, can I have a power city? Amen. Okay, very good. Now, so it was never mentioned by Jesus that anybody was instructed to tithe. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to 10, you cannot sustain tithing in Malachi. Because God was speaking to backsliding Israel. Israel had backsliding. And God was telling them to go back to the law. In verse 8, look at it. Deut uh, Malachi 3 8. <clears throat> you are caused with a cause, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Robbed me. Even this whole nation. And yesterday I did exegesis on rob. Is that true? Rob doesn't mean steal. Rob doesn't mean to steal. Rob means you have kept back what is mine. To steal means to break through and take what is not yours. They are two different things. Okay? Now, he wasn't saying you have stolen from me. What he was saying by rob was you robbed me of my honor. You have deprived me of my honor as the maker and sustainer of life. You have deprived me of my honor. That's the meaning of the word rob. So basically what we see, and I want to lay that foundation in your heart, is that the tithe from the book of Genesis was never required by anyone, but they gave it. And we see the reason why they gave it. To honor God. To honor God. To reverence God. To worship God. In the law where God asked it clearly, the reason was that so that they will fear him always. Did we read that? So they will fear him always. That's all. And it's so easy whenever you read the Bible with a preconceived notion, a mindset, you will dismiss the tithe easily because it refers to elements, you know? And you think those elements are not sustainable. We don't have Levites. We don't have a priest. We don't have a temple. 
Most of us are not farmers because only farmers were to tight. Doctors were not to tight. Lawyers were not to tight. Businessmen, it was only farmers that were instructed to tithe. Because the tithe was supposed to be farm produce. Okay? So that's not sustainable. And of course, we don't have the priesthood anymore of Aaron. So, you can say because of that, tithe is over. But then if you look at the reason for the tithe, it's well sustainable today to honor God. Because that's the same reason Abraham and Jacob gave the same tithe, to fear God. So if honoring God and worshipping God is a practice of the New Testament, then we have something to learn from the tithe. Let me explain honor to you quickly. Honor means to treat someone in his office. To treat someone in his office. Honor means to treat someone according to the, to the value of his office. The value of his office. Let me just give you a little illustration to help you understand honor. Let's say you become the president of Nigeria or you become the chief executive officer of Apple in Africa. And then on the day you are being sworn into office, your father was there, your teacher is there and all the people are sitting down. And then you stand before all of them and you say, I just want to, to really bring to your notice how hard I read in school. I worked hard all the days of my life as a student and it is because of that hard work that today I am here. Hard work really pays. Hard work pays. You know what that guy has done? He has dishonored his father and his teacher. Because what that boy should have done was to say, I am what I am today because my parents sent me to school. And my teacher patiently invested. That's why I'm where I am now. That is honor for his parents and honor for his teacher. Are we in the building? So honor means you acknowledge that even though you did some things, but what really made it work was because God was involved. Then you honor God for what God has done. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Alright, so that's what honor is in simple terms. Now, Honor, therefore, is critical because that is an expression of our worship to God. Because of who you are to me, because of what you have done for me, I am what I am. That's honor. So what did Abraham do? When he brought back the spoils, God didn't want his substance because God owns everything. There's nothing you have that God wants. God owns the whole world. He owns everything. He owns you and all you have. So when he brought the spoils, when he brought out the substance, what he was saying is that God, I acknowledge that all that I am and have, you give me. That's what the 10% was communicating. And Jacob made it very obvious. If you bless me, I will give you the tent. So honor is to say because of who you are, because of what I have, I honor you for what you have done. And that is what sustains the principle of the tithe in the New Testament. Now, we have lessons to learn from the giving of the tithe. That if the reason for the tithe, which we saw in Abraham, Isaac can be sustained with us today, then basically the tithe is not evil as people always think. So let's ask some fundamental questions. Can a new creation give tithe? Or should a new creation who is not under the law tithe? Or, like I said, if I'm going to answer, you know me, I don't answer yes or no. I explain, and from explanation, we arrive at yes or no, so that you are equipped. So I would rather ask, why was the tithe instituted? Obviously, the children of Israel had the record of Abraham and Jacob, and God sustained it under the law. But it was not a law in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, it was an act of honor that became a law under the law of Moses. An act of honor. 
that became a law. So I want to answer that question. And we will answer some fundamental questions to answer that. Why, what was the tithe? On the face value, you can reduce the tithe to shepherds, farm products, and herbs, and spices. So you cannot sustain the legal requirements of the tithe in this age. You can't sustain that legal side. Notice that when God asks for the tithe from animals and farm produce, money was the means of exchange. Money was present when God said the tithe should be animals and farm produce. They had money. We established that, right? There was money. And the tithe in Jesus' day was anise and cumin. Cori. He did not mention money, even though there was money. So the tithe was not money in the face of it. But look at Leviticus 27, 30. Let me show you something here that stands out. Leviticus 27, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy. If your Bible was mine, I will underline that. It is holy unto the Lord. Next verse, 31. And if a man will at all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add there to the fifth part thereof. 32. 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. Next verse. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. So this characteristic does not fit in an income earner today. Because it was supposed to be from harvest. But keep that in mind. It was collected yearly, every year, during harvest. Not every month. During harvest. Every year. And then there was one that was collected every three years. Okay? Are we in the building? When the tithe is gathered because there was a gathering, in Deuteronomy 14.23, they used to gather the tithe, give it to the Levites, then the Levites will give it to the priest in the temple. Jesus sustains where it was given. Jesus sustains till today where it was given. Because this is what he said, that they will put it in the place where he has chosen to put his name. Jesus sustains that today. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there. Now, who gets the tithe under the law? The Levites. Look at it. Let's read Numbers 18, 21 quickly. Numbers 18.21 Who gets the tithe? And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tent in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Alright? put Go ahead. 22. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they be as seen and die. 24. Give me 24. 24 because of tithe. tithe. But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 26, Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When you take of the children of Israel the tithes, which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer up and heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of it. So the Levites primarily take the tithes. The Levites. Look at how it is done. Deuteronomy 14.23 <clears throat> For, and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place where he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. That's why it was done. Alright? Now, so the tithe is also eating 
verse 29, Deuteronomy 14. You eat the tithe. Deuteronomy 14, 29. And the Levite, because he had no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gate, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied. They shall eat because it's food products. They shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand which thou doest. So the tithe is eating. Who are those to eat the tithe? You, number one. The Levites, number two. You didn't hear me. Who are those to eat the tithe? You, number one. The Levites, number two. The stranger, number three. The widow, number four. And the fatherless, five different people were to eat the tithe. Including you. So, this category of people, if I am, the, if I am you, I will write it down. You, one. Levite, two. Widows, three. Fatherless, four. Strangers, five. Because we are extracting lessons, doctrinal New Testament lessons from the tithe. You, the Levite, widows, fatherless, the strangers. Now let's come to the New Testament and let's make a case. Let's do what? Let's make a case. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 1. <clears throat> if, you, if you are sleeping before, you better wake up. This is the time to wake up. If you miss what I'm about to say, now you shouldn't have come to service at all. First Corinthians 9 1. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my walk in the Lord? Verse 2. This is brother Paul. Verse 2. If I be not an apostle unto others, yea, doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. Verse 3. My answer to them that do examine me is this. So brother Paul begins to discuss something very legitimate. Observe the way he started the discourse. Don't miss brother Paul's soonesses. Watch the way he is building his case. Verse 4. <clears throat> Same chapter 4. Have we not power to eat and drink? 5. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Kephas? Or, I only am Barnabas. Have not we power to forbear walking? The word power there means right. It means privilege. A right or a privilege. Okay? Now, look at verse 7. Take note of verse 7. Who goeth a warfare at any time at his own charges? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Verse 8. Say I these things as a man, or say, say it not the law, the same also. So, brother Paul is maintaining lessons from the law in the New Testament. Are we in the building? Okay. Put on, put on verse 9, verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded out the corn, that God take care of for oxen, verse 10. For it is written, verse 10, or saith he it all together for our sakes, for our sakes no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth shall plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? 
Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Now, verse 14. Who is he referring to here? Even so, he quoted from the law. Then he now said, even so, like the Levites, had the Lord ordained. Did you see the word ordained? If your Bible is mine, that's the word to underline. Had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. That is, the same way the Levites had a portion in Israel that was dedicated to them. The same way the Lord has ordained that they which preach the gospel should be taken care of by the people they preach to. Is ordained. It's not an advice. Now, so Paul makes a case for ministers by equating them with the Levites. Now we know that doctrinally the believer is now a priest unto God. But we also know that in the church or in the church age, there are people who stand in the position of spiritual authority. Okay? All of us are not standing here. But we are all priests. But we are not all standing here. See the way I'm sweating? We are not all sweating here. But we are all priests. But there is spiritual authority in the church age. God has set some over. Are we learning? Stay with me. In the church age, there are those who stand in spiritual authority who dedicate their time, their energy to feed you. <laughs> Since January this year, there is no day I have studied less than 12 hours. No exaggeration. My family is here. You know where you always find me. I sit there from 6 a.m. till 5 p.m. That's why you you can't find me on phone. Can't find me on social media. Can't find me there. I'm cooking. Because I have a responsibility to feed you, feed all the campuses, and everybody that follows my ministry, including ministers of the gospel that I mentor. I can't be found. No. No. So having dedicated that kind of time to feed you the way I feed you, you should take care of my financial needs. That's exactly what Brother Paul is saying here. You should make sure I lack nothing. You should make sure I have all I need. You should make sure I have all I need to be able to be comfortable in life to feed you more. See, I hear you should make sure of that. As money comes to your hand, you should say, ah, Papa, Papa, this is for Papa. This one. Because as revelation is coming for me too, this is for you. So as me too, I am downloading inside and sharing with you your money as it is coming, you should be sharing with me. If we have sown to you spiritual. Is it a crime if we collect? See, see, see the disparity. Spiritual, canal. Of your canal. I'm teaching here. Please stay with me. So now we know that doctrinally, there is spiritual authority. And there are those whom God has put over you who have the responsibility to feed you. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. For the perfecting of the saints to do the work of ministry that the body of Christ may be edified. And Paul uses that as an example to teach us that like those folks who are obligated to support the livelihood of the Levites, 
Today, you are also supposed to support the livelihood of those who labor over you in spirituals. And he uses the Levites in Israel example. And he says, even so, like them, had the Lord ordained. Had the Lord what? I like the word ordained. The word ordained means authorized. That, that they who preach the gospel should live off the gospel. So he equates the Levites as touching support of ministers with present day minister. Let me read this for you from Amplified, 1 Corinthians 9, 8 to 11. Amplified version, 1 Corinthians 9, 8 to 11. Do I say this only on human authority or as a man reasons? Does not the law endorse the same principle? Verse 9. For in the law of Moses it is written, You shall not muzzle an ox when it is treading out the corn. Is it only for oxen that God cares? Or does he speak subtly and entirely for our sakes? Assuredly, it is written for our sakes because the plowman ought to plow in hope. And the thresher ought to thresh in expectation of partaking of the harvest. 11. If we have sown the seed of spiritual good among you, is it too much? If we reap from your material benefits, 12. If others share in this rightful claim upon you, do we have a still better and greater claim? However, we have never exercised this right, but we endure everything than put a hindrance in the way of the spread of the good news, the gospel of Christ. Verse 13. Do you not know that those men who are employed in the services of the temple get their food from the temple and that those who tend the altar share with the altar in the offerings brought? Next verse. On the same principle, the Lord directed that those who publish the good news should live, get their maintenance by the gospel. It's a directive. It's, it's not whether you like it or not. No, it's a directive. Now, so we can sustain the Levite argument that the same way the Levites were taken care of, the minister ought to be taken care of. In honoring God, we give to his ministers. Just like Abraham gave to a human being, Melchizedek, and in that, he honored God. When you give to me, you're honoring God. Stay with me. Let me give you a corroboration to that. First Timothy 5 17. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Worthy of what? Double honor. Especially they who labor in word and doctrine. Next verse. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. That's the law of double mention. Look at Luke chapter 10 verse 7. Look at what Jesus told the disciples when he sent them out. And in the same house, remain. Remain in the same house. Be accommodated in the same house. Eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. The house where you are doing ministry, stay there and eat and drink. Same principle. Matthew 10.10 10. Nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Meat there is not suya. Meat there is sustenance. Jesus quoted it, instructing the disciples, you know, that any house you go to, so if a man comes to your house to teach you the word of God, it is your responsibility to refresh him and take care of him. It's your responsibility. It's your God-giving responsibility. 
No, no, no. It's not like, uh, can I? No, it's not can I. It's must I. It's I must. Mm. <laughs> you take care of the man of God. And the Bible says, anything you give us, you should eat. We shouldn't ask questions. So if what you have is a rat, bring it, we eat. We are not supposed to ask questions because that's what you have. I don't eat rats. Stop looking at me like that. Everybody, you don't bring three rats for me in the bag. I say, Papa, it has started coming. <laughs> when you preach in a place, he says, they must give you food. Why? Because what you are doing is for their sake. For their sake. He says, he that receives you, receive me. And he that doesn't honor you, doesn't honor me. That's Jesus speaking. That's key word. Somebody brings the word of God to you. How do you honor God? You give to him. That's honoring God. And that is how it's sustained in the new covenant. It's honor to God. It has nothing to do with me. Abel Damina. No, 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 no. Yes, I'm the one that will collect it. But it has everything to do with Oga. It's honor to our master. It's honor to our redeemer. It's honor to our savior. It's an honor to the one who dies. Because I'm not here because I'm smart. I'm here because he called me and sent me to you. I have come to you. You have received my ministry. So having received of my ministry, the next thing now is for me to partake of your income. That's the way it is. That's New Testament. It's not somebody manipulate. That's sound Bible teaching. And that's a proof that you're growing spiritual. That's because the essence of teaching is for spiritual growth. When you start growing spiritually, you become responsible to the people ministering to you. If I'm teaching, say I hear you. If someone teaches you the word of God regularly, the Bible says your response should be honor. Food, drinks, substance, not honor like this. Mm -mm. Don't do like that. Do like that for Jesus. For me, it's like this. Not like this, so. Do you understand? You see the way my hand is? Not like this. It's like this. You must carry something. See, I hear you. That's Bible teaching. This sound Bible teaching. What you're hearing is the whole counsel of God. Praise God. Paul uses the Levites of the Old Testament to speak about the ministers of the New Testament. Now don't forget the key word. The key word is not money. The key word is not percentages. The key word is honor. It's not money. It's not about the money. It's not about the percentages. Somebody came to my office with a thousand naira and he was busy hiding his hand. And he was busy saying, Papa, thank you. Thank you for changing my life. Papa, you need to know what I was before now. Even though I was in a church for 12 years. You need to know. I was blind. Papa, I just want to thank God for you. And he was busy hiding his hand. So I asked him, is your hand not together? He said, no. He said, Papa, I'm just thinking because what I'm carrying is too small. I don't know how to give you. I said, ah. I said what are you doing? Bring something, my friend. He said, Papa, the thing is too small. I said, ah, it's not about the size of the money. It's the size of your heart. Expressed through that money. Bring it. Kneel down. I bless you. I said, you know, it's small, 1,000. What will you bring it? You are not asked to think, meditate over it for me. Don't meditate over it. Just... Bring it. Because if you are faithful with 1,000, you'll be faithful with 100,000. If you can't be faithful with that 1,000, even if you have a million, you will still be like that. So start practicing from where you are. Practice makes. So by the time 10 million comes, you now know how to do it again at that level. 
So I said, oh no, it's just 500. What will Papa is for? Don't be thinking for me. Bring it. Is it your own? <laughs> Did you bring it and I rejected it? Bring it now. It's 500 naira, not money. <laughs> Don't you see that they can lock people in prison for 500 naira? Bring it. It can buy a handkerchief. It can buy me a bottle of water. Somebody called me the other day and said, Papa, send your account. I want to send you a recharge card. So I sent him my account. He sent me 300,000 naira. I said, recharge card, 300,000. How many people am I calling? Me that don't even call people. <laughs> I said, push it, push it towards the radio broadcast. Push it. Push it to radio broadcast. It will amaze you to know that the gifts you give to me for me, they go to the ministry. I have radio broadcasts. And I want to thank those of you that have paid for one radio station or the other. Because there are some of you that have helped to take the load off my neck. You are paying for a radio station. You are paying for another radio station. Some of you are paying to support television. Some of you are sponsoring radio stations. That is honoring the ministry that you are drinking from. And embarking on the responsibility of reaching the ends of the earth with the gospel. That's how it should be. And some of you bring food to me. Some of you bring monies to me. And I want you to know I, 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 I appreciate them. Sometimes, some of you, I don't ever get to see you. Just come and drop it in my house and off your God. Some of you even send somebody to bring them. And with those sacrifices, God is well pleased. God is well pleased. So I say, how can I give Papa this? Papa doesn't need it. Shut up. Are you supposed to calculate for me? How do you know I don't need it? Bring it. Let me be the one to say I don't need it. And I will never say that. Because Jesus, anything they give you, collect. <laughs> Am I teaching good? So you have no excuse. Say, I have no excuse. I have no excuse. Don't wait until it's plenty. Bring it like that. Because when it becomes plenty, you may be tempted. Just be bringing it. Me, I'll be gathering it for you. Don't save it for me. <laughs> Bring it. Don't save it for me. <laughs> Somebody say, ah, ah. Yes, I'm teaching you Bible. Am I teaching Bible? Yeah. Matthew chapter 10, verse 10. Look at it. Jesus sends 12 people and he tells them, don't carry, don't carry anything. Don't carry your own cars. Don't carry your own clothes. He says, someone who is a pastor should not walk. He should not walk. He shouldn't be walking to live when he is pastoring, laboring, studying, fasting, praying, and seeing to the spiritual development of the people. He shouldn't have any other work other than that because pastoring is more than a full-time job. You will not have an idea till when God opens your eye to see what we go through. To see what I go through. Then you will appreciate there's no laziness in pastoring. Pastoring does not afford you the luxury of laziness. No. That's why the apostle said, to even serve tables is too much. That is to even serve tables. Let's look for faithful men and give them that because the ministry of the word and prayer is enough to engage you. Of course, except it's a lazy pastor who do not, does not understand exegesis, who just cut and join Bible. But for the kind of teachings we teach you in this ministry, it's not cut and join. It's intensive. It's intensive. It's very intensive. Glory to God. If I'm teaching, shout, I hear you. Now, observe, 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 observe. Jesus said that when you go to a house and you are not welcomed, Take your blessing and go. Okay? Matthew 10, 40. What does he mean by welcomed? Matthew 10, verse 40. Mm -mm. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Next verse. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Next verse. And whosoever shall give a drink, um, give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Next verse. 
And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed them to teach and to preach in their cities. So when he says to receive, he's referring to material well-being of those who preach the gospel. So we can readily sustain the argument of honoring God with our income by honoring those who minister to us. We honor God with our income by honoring the people who minister to us with our resources. That's how we honor God. And this must be intentional, deliberate, and constant. So we have spoken about the ministers. Let's see what. Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 29. Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 29. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that bringeth the field that bringeth forth year by year. 23. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thy oil, of the firstling of thy hearts and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long, you sell what you have carrying and carry the money there. Next verse, 25. Then thou shalt turn it into money, 26. Uh, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatever thy soul lost it after, for oxen or for sheep or for wine. So you can change the products into money. Then when you arrive, you use the money to buy whatever your soul delights. Then you will eat and share with the Levite and then rejoice. You will eat and share with the Levite, then rejoice. That's what they were asked to do in the Old Testament. Now, so from the income, you take a tithe year by year to the temple. How you eat it, you spread it yourself. The Levite, the fatherless, the stranger, and the widow. Look at verse 23. The 23rd verse of that numbers, where we, I mean Deuteronomy where we read, is for the purpose of honoring God. So anybody who is born again has the ability to honor God. Except you're not born again. In your salvation package is the ability inherent to honor God. God gave a prophecy to Jeremiah. I will take away from them the stony heart and give them a heart of flesh. I will sprinkle their hearts with water. In the book of Romans, he says, The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It's the constitution of our DNA. We are a people of love. We love God. And the way we love God is by expressing our love to the minister who ministers to us. And when we do that, it is our honor for God. Am I teaching good? Okay. I know people will say, well, in the New Testament, as you propose in your heart, I agree. Second Corinthians 9, 7. Teaching good? Every man according as he proposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. I did some work on that yesterday, right? Now you wonder where did Paul get cheerful giver from? He got cheerful giver from the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 14.26. That's where Paul got cheerful giver from. Look at it. Look at it. Thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thy household. Thou shalt rejoice, cheerful. Whatever you are so lusted for, meaning the tithe can be converted to money, but when you arrive, and you buy what you want. You share. You rejoice. That's where brother Paul got cheerful giver from. It was an act of cheerfulness. They were to convert it to money. And whatever you take. You share with the Levite. The stranger. The widow. The fatherless. And then you rejoice. Now. We have talked about the ministers. So we can support our ministers. With a percentage of our income. As money is coming to you, a portion is for your man of God. Galatians 6 6. Let me give you double mention. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things, in all 
good things. Give me the amplified of that. Amplified version. Let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all good things with his teacher. Contributing to his support. Contributing to his support. Give me the message translation. Galatians 6.6 6. Be very sure now you have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Now that you are growing let it reflect in your generosity with those who are teaching you the word. Every good thing you share with your teacher. Can I have a good amen? It's an instruction. So we have an instruction from God to support the ministers. So the ministers now take the place of Melchizedek. Melchizedek never said, I bless you. He said, God bless you. Then Abraham gave to Melchizedek. So when I teach you of the blessings of God and what God has done for you in Christ... You now give to me of your natural income blessings and by doing that, you honor the Lord Jesus. Is it clear? Okay, please, very important. Now, we are the priests of God, but in the church we have those who labor over us. So let me move to the next thing. Deuteronomy 14, 29. He speaks about the stranger, the widow, and the fatherless. Can we sustain the stranger, the widow, and the fatherless in the New Testament? Remember, it's Levite. First of all, you. Then Levite. Then widow, stranger, fatherless. So can we sustain that? James 1, 26. James, lessons from the tithe. James 1, 26. If any among you seem to be religious... And bridled not his tongue, but deceived his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Next verse. Pure religion and undefiled before God. And the father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. So now, brother James have brought the widow and the fatherless. In the New Testament. We have an instruction to support with a portion of our income. The fatherless and the widows. Lessons from the tithe. Matthew 25, 34. Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come be blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is Jesus teaching. Next verse. For I was a hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Next verse. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Next verse. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Next verse. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of this my brethren, you have done it unto me. So the tithe can be sustained in this covenant to help the widows, the early church practiced it. In Acts chapter 6, the widows had their daily ministration. Okay? Now, but observe, widows that will be supported must be widows indeed. Indeed. First Timothy 5 verse 3. They must be, not just be gathering widows everywhere. I'm saying, uh, I want to give to the widows. You just gather widows all over. Including young girls who just who can marry two more times? Gather them, widow, widow. No, that's not Bible. There is a there's, there's a there is a prerequisite 
for the kind of widow that is a widow recognized by God. They are called widows indeed. First Timothy 5 3. <clears throat> Honor widows that are widows indeed. What are widows indeed? Next verse. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their, their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Next verse. Now, she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusted in God, continued in supplication and prayers night and day. Are you following? Night and day. Look at verse 11. Part of the qualifications of a widow indeed. Verse 11. But the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. So younger widows does not require support. They should go and marry. Widows indeed are widows and if you read that text, he said they are from 60 years and above. 60 years and above. And they must have raised children. They must have entertained strangers. And all the time you find them in the church praying night and day. Those are the widows to support. Is it clear? This say it not I. <laughs> but the scriptures so those of you that have been doing operation visit the widows you better re examine what you're doing make sure they are widows indeed don't just gather women and say all of you widows take one one pair of wrapper it's good but the bible says if they are young don't spoil them by giving them drive them let them go and marry Am I reading Bible? He said, let them go and marry you. Okay. So, widows were supported with income. What about strangers? Because he says, you should also take care of strangers in the Old Testament. Alright, so, Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Next verse. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Entertain means to take care of. Take care of. First Timothy 5.10 First Timothy 5.10 Where reported of for good works. That's qualification for widows. If she have brought up children. If she have lodged strangers. If she have washed the saints feet. If she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work, that's the qualification for a widow to be supported. Okay, I have to bring that so that you see it in the Bible. What about the poor? Okay, so have we seen pastors, men of God? Have we seen them in the support? Have we seen strangers? Eh? Have we seen widows? Have we seen fatherless? Eh? Okay. So the same thing that they were to use the tithe for has been brought to the New Testament. We are teaching. What about the poor? Those who can't afford food. They can't afford anything. Galatians 2.10 Only the wool that we will, should remember the poor. The same which I also was forward to do. Paul say, even me, I was willing to support the poor. Ephesians 4.28 Let him that stole, Ephesians, let him that stole, steal no more. But rather, let him labor, walking with his hand, the thing which is good, that he might have to give to him that needed. So, if you are a thief, and now you are hearing my message, stop stealing. Get a legitimate job. Why must you get a job? To have. To give. See that? Generosity is the hallmark of Christianity. To have. To give to him. That is in need. Not to give to get. Mm -mm. To give to meet his need. 
It's very clear. This is even for those that used to steal. You're laughing. Didn't he say, let him that stole? Hey, this is for thieves. He said, if you are a thief, stop. But don't be idle. Get a job. And as you get money, take a portion and give to him that is in need. The scriptures are clear. These are apostolic, very plain instructions for the body of Christ. If I'm teaching good, shout a powerful amen. amen. Okay, now. So it was a practice in the early church. In Acts chapter 2, it happened. In Acts chapter 4, it, it became a teaching in the epistles. Their practice became our teaching. Under the law, the tithe was paid yearly because of harvest. But thank God today, we feast weekly. We meet Wednesdays, we meet Sundays, and many times we meet every day. Is it not true? We meet every day. That means every day we meet, you should have an offering to give. You should have a set apart money to honor God. As increase is coming to you. It's clear. Okay, First Corinthians 16, 1 Corinthians 16.1 Please pay attention. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye order. Somebody say order. Uh-huh. Now what about the frequency? Upon the fe- next verse, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week. So this is weekly because that's how they used to meet. Our own today is every day. Or twice a week. Put it up. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you, how many of you? Every one of you, lay by him in store as had prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Let every one of you take a portion. Does that look like tight? Huh? Huh? No. It's not tight, but it looks like. Because you should take a portion. That is, as money comes, you decide a percentage. You set apart. Not inspirational giving. Where I'm teaching, say, ah, the message is so heavy, Papa. I want to be, uh-uh. that one is there. This one is planned. In fact, let me tell you something. As a child of God that really wants to grow in the knowledge of Christ, open a savings account. And in that account, it is set apart money to honor God that goes to that account. From that account, you give to the work of God. From that account, you give to the poor. From that account, you give to the fatherless. From that account, you give to the widow within the house. You must have an account so that when money comes, you just remove it and put there. You know that that one is a no-go area. That money is hallowed unto God. It's set apart. You should. You should have an account for that. You should have an account for that. I have an account for that. I have an account for that. And I've maintained that account for years. An account where there's nothing that comes to me that I'm, I eat all. There's none. Every time I have an increase, a portion of it goes to that account. It is from that account I support all the people I support, the people I reach out to, the people I assist, the people I give to and honor God in their lives. It's from that account. And as a believer, you need it. You've never heard me say, but because I'm teaching on this subject, I've got to share with you. So I can provoke you to good works. So it's apostolic instruction. It's not if you like. It's not if you like. You are born of the Spirit. So, in fact, you know what the Amplified, look at Amplified, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. See the way the Amplified puts it. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, Amplified version. Now, concerning the money contributed for the relief of the saints, God's people, you are to do the same as I directed the churches of Galatia to do. Next verse. On the first day of each week, let each of one personally put aside something and save it up as he has prospered. In proportion to what he is giving. Your giving must be proportionate with your income. You can't just casually take something and drop. 
Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And as your income increases, your givings must increase. That's responsible Christianity. As it increases, your giving increases. And your giving ought to be intentional. I'm going for service. I prayerfully package my offering before I get there. You know what the offering is that turning around? Uh-uh. You came intentionally to worship. And your offering is part of your worship. You came with it planned. You pray about it. You plan it. All the time you plan it. Every time you plan it. You start from where you are. Faithfully. And as you grow, you grow in your giving. Say, I hear you. It's honor for God. In a nutshell, we are not giving to bribe God. We are giving to honor God. To honor God. He gave you what you have. So, it, 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 you are not just giving because you like God. You are giving because God deserves that honor. It is his right. Honor is God's. I can't just go about feeling like, you know, my power got me all I want. I, have, I know where I am. I know God brought me where I am today. I know how good God has been in my life. I know how faithful God has been in my life. I know how generous God has been in my life. And I know how much God has kept me. Somebody told me over 10 years ago, Dr. Damina, so you've decided to preach the message of Christ. You will see how poverty will kill you. A man of God told me that to my face. It's because in the message of Christ, there is no money. No money. Oh. He says, so since you have decided to leave this one we are preaching, poverty will show you. And I told him, if I have to be poor for life to preach the truth, let it be my cross. Let it be my cross. And I told mama, I said, get ready. We're about to go through some rough time. Because when I begin to preach the message of Christ, I'm going to break the backbone of this prosperity gospel. And I'm going to pull people from all of this materialistic gospel to focus on Christ. So we may go through some rough time. Fasting your seatbelt. Mama said, let's go all the way. She said, good. Oh yes, we had some very rough times, man. Very rough times. At one time, we couldn't pay our TV bills. We couldn't pay our TV bills. We had to bring Kingdom Life Network down. Because there was no money to pay. Because the moment I started preaching Christ in this church, a lot of you stopped giving monies. Even offering was a problem. Because you thought liberty has come. So, people just stopped. And a few pastors around me that was preaching what I was preaching came to me and said they were experiencing the same thing. In their churches, people were not giving. So I went to God in prayer. And I said, God, is there something I've done wrong? I need you to talk to me. We're not able to even meet the bills. We can't pay salaries. Nothing is working. Lord, is there something I'm doing wrong? God said to me, no. You have just exposed the heart of the people in your church. You have exposed their hearts. And I said, what is that? He said, it means they never gave to me. They were giving to themselves. Because when you were preaching that if they give, there will be a breakthrough. If they give, things will be good. If they give, there will be no devourer. If they give, they will not have accident. If they give, Satan will not molest them. They were giving so that Satan won't do all of that. So they were actually giving to themselves. And when you now told them that even if they give or not, God will protect them and take care of them. So they proved that they were not giving to me, but they were giving to themselves. And I said, God, what do I do now? He said, go and teach them my love and teach them to honor my love and i started teaching and you know when you are breaking down something you built before and then you want to start building it again that is where the challenge comes so we started and we patiently went through it was rough many times it was rough very rough kept 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 our smile kept drawing strength from the word of god and just kept preaching just kept preaching just kept teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching. And then people started getting blessed anyhow. The word began to grow. And people began to, Dr. Damina, take this money. Dr. Damina, you have blessed me too much. Take this money. And people started sending me monies from all over the place. And then suddenly, I was back on my feet. Somebody showed up and said, I want to pay for your television station for one full year. How much is the bill? I gave her the bill. She sent the money. Millions. She just sent it one time. She said, I was in church for years and I didn't know Christ. 
I met you for a few months, just following your teaching, I've known Christ. What am I keeping money for? Boom, she sent. People started sending monies. Now we are on 11 hours of radio every day since last day, July. Every day, 11 hours on radio. Go and try one minute on radio. Go and try one minute on radio. A few days ago, one man of God called a friend of mine and said, ah, did you hear Dr. Damina is attacking tight and all that? The man of God said, you are not listening. That's the problem. You are not listening. Me, I'm listening. You know. I'm listening. You know. He's not attacking tight. He's putting things in perspective. Me, I'm following. You know. He said, you think he's poor? He's not poor. Dr. Damina is on radio 11 hours. His TV channel is running without prayer point. He said, in fact, let me tell you the truth. He even sent me some money. I'm a partaker. He said, so that man of God, he said, the other man of God said, eh, hey, so I am missing. He said, you are the one missing. Me, I've already joined the train. We are flown together. <laughs> and now, a member of this church was telling mama that somebody said, so you people don't pay tight in Pasadena. You don't pay tight. And she told him, wait, wait, wait. When I used to pay tight, I was not even faithful. But now, having seen that tight is not a requirement, I give in honor of God. I give far, far better than I was given before. And that's the testimony of many of you here. Is that not a testimony? That's the testimony of many of you here. We are not giving to get. We are not in a transaction. We are giving in honor of Christ. And we walk. We trust God for favors. We get into places and make money. And we take a chunk and say, put it for the work of God. And we are able to do much more. Today the gospel is reaching the nations of the earth. People are supporting. People are paying for different things. People are just excited about pushing the word. Pushing the word all over the place. That's what the gospel does. So, as a child of God, you must make up your mind to stay with the truth of the gospel. You must and make up your mind that as a believer born of God, your income must glorify Christ. Amen. I said amen. You honor him by giving to the ministers of the gospel. You honor him by giving to the fatherless, the widow, the stranger. You honor God by reaching out. And of course, of course, in, in giving to the poor, listen, you know, the poor here is not lazy people. It's not lazy people. Somebody that is not doing anything is just lazy, just going around. Give me, give me, give me. No. Bible says such people should be rebuked. Don't give to them. The poor here is people you see that are making efforts. They are doing something, but still, their efforts are not adding up. Those are the kind of people you aid, you support. Not somebody who's just lazing around. After all, the Bible says you should take care of the weak. Are you weak? You are not weak. Go and get a job. Go and do something. Because there's dignity in labor. God does not support laziness. Did you hear what I said? You know, let's face the facts. We all don't have the equal privileges. You know, some people are not really lazy. Some people is just, it's just the opportunities available to them. And we don't all have equal opportunities. Some of us came from families that had inheritance, that had wealth. And some of us came from nothing. We didn't all have the same opportunities. Even some of you, where you are now, you can hardly spot an opportunity. But there's still somebody in this church that has a number of opportunities and a window of them to play around with. So all of us don't have equal chances. That is why those of us that are more blessed ought to assist those that are still struggling. Did you understand what I'm saying? Because the world, the world has an unequal distribution of wealth. It's unequal because of the fall of man unequal. Some countries have more privileges than others. Some countries do. That's why sometimes when opportunities open abroad, you see Nigerians flying out. Because there are more opportunities in some places than other places. So all of us are not equal in opportunities. That's why those of us that are more favored should be able to help those that are struggling but haven't had the opportunity to break even. That's the way God designed it. Am I communicating at all? Yeah, that's the way it should be in the church. That's the way it should be in the house of God. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. So you take a portion. So things to note as a roundup. Are you blessed? That all of your income does not belong to you. A portion every time you have increased belongs to God. That your income came from God. So you choose what portion to honor God with. 
you choose a portion. The New Testament didn't give us percentage. You determine that. You choose a portion. Primarily support should be done in the church. The poor saints, widows who are saints, strangers who are saints, fatherless who are saints, primarily should be in the church. Do good unto all men, especially they all. That word especially doesn't mean first of all. Especially means do good to all men, particularly or specifically the all men are those of the household of faith. So the doing good should be from the house. Should be from the house. What you have done to this, my brethren. Collection for the saints. So we are talking about poor saints. Poor widows who are saints. Fatherless who are saints. Ministers who dedicate their time to teach. Who are also saints. Paul is saying, don't give it, you know, uh, spontaneous. Give it intentional give it as planned so can the new creation tight yes yes what is tight 10 percent so can the new creation give this 10 percent yes but that should be the limit you shouldn't go below 10 you should start from 10 and grow in the new testament we're generous so we go beyond and above. Say, I hear you. Yes. We are generous. We have God's DNA in us. We give our best. We give our best. Constantly. Because when you give what you are saying is God, I and all that I am is yours. Honor the Lord with your first fruit and with the increase. Honor the Lord with it. It's honor. You honor the Lord with it. Somebody says, so what if I decide to give to my church or my pastor my first salary every year? Is it not your salary? You decided to give? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But it must not be done as an obligation or a condition for blessing. No. You do it because that's what you decided to do. It's your way of honoring God. Are we settling matters here? It's your way of honoring God. But not as obligation. Just what you chose to do <clears throat> Psalm 35 27 let them that favor his righteous cause shout for joy let them continually say the Lord be magnified that has pleasure in the prosperity that is when I prosper God has pleasure in my prosperity why because in my prosperity I am favoring his cause I increase materially and my support for his work increases. So God has pleasure in my prosperity. Why? Cry yet saying, my city through prosperity shall spread. That is with more money, my world will get to more places. The more money we have, the more impact we can make. The more nations we can reach. The more nations of the world we can reach. It will amaze you to know how many nations of the earth were reaching, even right now as I'm preaching. It will surprise you to know from how many countries people are watching this service right now. Both on Kingdom Life Network, on, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on radio all over the world. It will amaze you to know. We have people watching from everywhere. The other day, somebody come from Fiji Island who is following. We have people watching from Australia, from New Zealand. We have people watching from India. We have people watching from the Americas. We have people watching from, you know, all, all, all over Africa. In fact, all over Africa. We have people watching from all over Africa. Then I just got a mail two days ago. Somebody in Indonesia wants to start a power city in Indonesia. And I've, I've hooked him up with our training department. People are coming out from everywhere. And it's because there is money to get it there. So the more money we get, the more we will get it in. All over Aquaibom right now, the world is penetrating everywhere. Are you witnesses? It's penetrating everywhere. People are moving to live in New York. Pastor Jerome came from Lagos. He came from Lagos to see me. He's been blessed by the ministry. From South Africa to Lagos, Lagos to Uyo. When he came here after a few days, he said, you know what? I want to stay here for some time. Okay, I will go and bring my things. He said, okay, to even go is a problem because if I miss one day, it's too much. 
I could follow on TV, but life is better. He, he asked them in Lagos to pack his things and send down. His things have arrived. People are moving from all over. Bishop came from Bauchi. Yesterday, another guy came from Borono State. I got an email yesterday from Liberia. The man said, I want to pack my things and come and stay for one year. There are families here that moved to Akwaibom because of Power City. Why? The, the word reached them. And it's because people made their monies available to get the word there. So the more monies we get, the more this thing will go. Listen carefully, people. You have a pastor who is not interested in material competition. My focus is kingdom. You've been around, you know. The more money I get here, you see the kind of crazy things we do for the kingdom. Crazy things. I was telling mama the other day that I'm prayerfully considering that next day I want to have missionaries from all over Africa into Uyo for one year. Bring them from different countries and train them with this message for one year and then send them back to their countries. Let them take the fire there. But that will cost us building. We have to build accommodations. It will cost us feeding these missionaries. You know, and taking care of them. And they come here, we teach them, train them, coach them, put the fire. Then, boom! Let them go back to them. And I want it from every country in Africa. Both English and Francophone speaking. I mean, I'm French speaking. I want people from every nation. They'll be kept here, camped here, hosted here, fed here, trained. And sent back. See commotion all over Africa. This message will hit everywhere. Am I talking to somebody? Can we do it? Shall be done. Shall be done. It's done. It's done. We have a responsibility to our generation to bring the truth of Christ. We have it. And that's why all of you are going to make money. Because there's a lot to do in the future. Somebody shout, I'm making money for the gospel. I didn't hear a good amen. So you determine what part to give. Let me tell you as I close, honor is very, very precious. Dishonor is expensive. When we refuse to honor God, we are saying, I am sufficient by myself. When we honor God, we are saying, you are the reason for who I am. You are the reason for what I have. And that is why people have the liberty to determine what percentage to give. If you want to start from 10, there's nothing against that. You want to make it 20, you want to start from 30, you want to start from 40. There's nothing wrong. Some of us started from 10. And we were faithful with the 10 and we mastered the 10. Then we went beyond it. We went beyond it. And today we give generously. We give towards the work. Praise God. Have I cleared everything? So can you see that the lessons from the tithe covers the things that the tithe was covering? Are you observing? Are you observing? It covers everything that the tithe covered. However, it is better now because there are no obligations and it is better now because there are no conditions. It is better now because there are no percentages. You determine the percentages. And it is better now because you are not giving to get. You are giving because you love God. Praise God. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you this morning. Glory! Hallelujah. Let's pray in tongues for a few seconds to get everyone. Angra de sokla da brena kakoro do sokle de brena hota Egebo jakala na mambra nangro do sokala da brena kakoro do bozekle de brena hata na O jakoro do bozekle de brena kakoro do bozekle de brena kalo do boro do bozeki ala nama Angela de bosha Angela de bosha Angela de bosha agaro to sokle de brena Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift your right hand and say me, in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to speak confidently and boldly. In the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that all that I have and all that I am honors God. 
Father, I am because you are. You are the reason for my being. You are my life, my righteousness. You are my holiness. You are my sanctification. I honor you with my heart, with my being, with my resources. I honor you because you are my only source. You are not just my source. You are my only source. Outside you, I have no other source. My heart is yours. My strength is yours. My resources, I use them to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I favor the righteous cause. I favor the righteous cause. Therefore, I shout for joy. Can I have a shout of joy in this? Song? That doesn't sound like a joyful shout. Glory! Glory! Let them shout for joy. Somebody shout, the Lord is magnified in the prosperity of his servants. Say, God is magnified in my prosperity. Say, I prosper. I prosper. And in my prosperity, I magnify God. Say, in my prosperity, I support the gospel. In my prosperity, I help the poor, the widow, the fatherless, the stranger. In my prosperity, I honor God. I thought I would hear powerful amen. Let them continually say, The Lord be magnified that has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Take a Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for the privilege to teach and preach your word this morning and to fellowship in the light of your word. We keep growing and growing in knowledge. We grow in grace. We abound. We abound in liberality. We abound in generosity. We and all that we have honors you. I ask that this revelation keeps growing big in the hearts of your people. I decree that every hold that contradicts their identity is broken. Generosity is our nature. Therefore, Father, we decree that as we continue to walk towards ensuring that the gospel continues to advance, we increase on every side. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness, disease, oppression, Satan. Get your hands in the name of Jesus. Sick bodies be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the blessing upon this house. Thank you for the grace of God that is upon this ministry. Thank you for our online community. Thank you for our campuses. And thank you for everyone that is a part of this ministry. Together, we see this gospel blanketing the entire blue marble planet. And we give you praise for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Grab a good offering. Let's honor Christ. Let's give in honor, honor of the labor of God's word. <clears throat> we give in honor of the labor of God's word. And now we give with understanding. We give intentionally. When we ask you to give now, you know exactly what we are giving for. So you give knowingly and intentionally and deliberately. It's not collection. Mm -mm. This is revelational giving in honor of Christ. Praise the Lord. 
online the banking details are scrolling on television the banking details are scrolling and uh, for the radio audience i'm sure by now you're acquainted with the banking details i've taken up all the time so we're not going to have asked the counselor today but it continues tomorrow at 6 p.m gmt plus one but it's an honor to be able to serve you the grace of god lift up your offerings father we thank you for the privilege of giving today we give in faith we give in honor of christ our givings are a sweet smell before you both we and all that we have is accepted by you therefore i decree that this week opportunities and favors open up to your people every need is met supernaturally in the name of jesus and i decree that your going out is blessed and the work of your hands are blessed thank you father for answered prayer in jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen, amen. i didn't hear that amen at all yeah. online community we are signing you off um, now listen, you know that our broadcast is twice a day on social media platforms, 12 noon and 6 p.m. GMT plus one. And the whole of this week, we'll just keep broadcasting and bringing you clarity and further teachings to enrich your work with Christ. But we love you guys. And if you have any questions, don't forget to send to Ask the Counselor. Uh, don't forget to send them through. We will, you know, answer them in Ask the Counselor. But we love you guys. Our campuses, we live in the able hands of our coordinators and everybody else. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Woo! Glory to God forever. By this message, for these all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damini. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. The Spirit of God spoke to me that this year, the alignment will get more sharper. It will get more sharper and the difference between darkness and light will get more clearer. This year, it's going to happen. False prophets and false preachers will be exposed. Charlatans will be disgraced them all because the light of God's word is going to grow and discernment will be very sharp. Deception will increase for those that will be deceived. Those that will be deceived will be deceived to silliness. Those that have chosen the path of darkness, darkness will consume them. That is, they'll be so full of darkness that they will not find their way. And those that have chosen the path of light will walk in greater illumination. There will be so much light. So there will be such clarity between darkness and light. It's not going to be like it is now. Well, we don't know which is which because all of us look alike. All of us sound alike. False prophets are using Jesus. We too are using Jesus. Charlatans are using tongues. We too, we are using tongues. No, no, no. There will be a sharp divide. Kabatona. The body of Christ will emerge out of the rubbles. Out of the rubbles, there shall be an emergence of the structure. There will be an emergence of the shape. The church of Jesus will start taking shape. It will start taking shape and it will become very clear to the world that this is the church of Jesus. I speak to you the mind of God Almighty. It shall no more be business as usual. It shall no more be a combination of all of us. No, no, saith God, my body will rise and emerge out of the rubbles. And saith God, an exceeding great army is rising from among the rubbles. And it shall be clear, it shall be obvious. The word of God will grow like never before before. Hunger for the world will grow like never before. The people of God are going to go after. Hunger for my world will rise very strong among my people. And my people will seek for pasture like never before. I say it God. That's why I'm preparing you. I'm equipping you because people are going to look for pasture and they're going to look for you and they're going to come to you and they're going to ask you and you will become teachers. You will become pastors. You will become ministers of the gospel in your various places of vocation. Wherever you are found, you will be a teacher because you will be hunger. Men are going to be seeking for the knowledge of the true God. In the midst of this demarcation, the dividing line will be very obvious. I didn't hear powerful amen. Yeah.